Good morning, Capital Life Church. It is so great to be able to be together again online. And so I encourage you to share the messages as you are attending so that other people can also receive God's word. We have some very exciting news that we just heard. That is that Christina and Nick Ryder had their little boy and his name is Lincoln Grant. He looks like a little president to be one day. So, so cute. Congratulations to your family. And we'll be praying that everyone recovers quickly and that little Melody enjoys her new baby brother. So we have a very interesting message today. I decided to, you know, I'm always pretty direct and honest and vulnerable, which is kind of scary and risky at times. But today I want to share with you about my favorite scripture verses. And I have lots of them, so this is just a few of them. But so I, I shared with you the last time that I had started a process of working on my strength and health. And so I started a... Um, program of exercising and a commitment to exercise 30 minutes a day for 100 days. So I started that on April 1st and I finished 100 days of exercising every single day for 30 minutes without excuses, without fail. It was not easy. I did not feel like it so many of the days. And then I got to the point where it was like, I kind of looked forward to it and I would sort of you know, I always put it off till the end of the day, which was really dumb and hard. And I know you're like, what does this have to do with the Bible? And what does this have to do with church? Just wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> but anyway, so um, finally, I got to day 100. We took a picture on day one and on day 100. And I couldn't tell a difference. <laughs> So I decided before I even got to day 100 that I was going to continue and I was going to continue by um, adding new disciplines to what it was already a discipline that had become more of a habit. And so in this process, I am now on day 117 by the time you are viewing this service. And so I have added new disciplines to that, which includes stretching and meditation and lots of dietary um, changes. And so with that, I was having a conversation. Now here comes the vulnerable part and we'll get to the scriptures and we'll get to how this applies to the word of God and our daily living. But I was having a conversation with my sister and this is a different sister from the one who gives me all the emojis every single day, which she did for 100 days without fail. I got emojis for every day that I exercised. So it got up to 100 amazing emojis. That was my, um, like my medal for the day. I was so excited to have this. But I was speaking with my other sister who's the second oldest sister. And um, I was just saying how frustrated I was because I wish that I had started on day one of the 100 days doing the other disciplines along with the exercise so that I could have actually seen the difference, even though I do definitely feel the difference. And so she said, well, why do you think, you know, you didn't do that? And she has had this conversation with me before many of times. And um, because she's the sister that I talk to about health stuff because she has had to help her husband through some health issues. He's a firefighter. So he had, um, he was a captain of the fire department too. So he had a lot of health issues from toxicity and things like that. So they've gone through some things to help him with his health. And now he's like the picture of health does CrossFit and wins competitions in his division and really amazing and just fights what his body has to endure. Well, anyway, in talking with her, she said, Lisa, I really think that it's a heart issue. And I'm like, no, I think it's a discipline issue, <laughs> which <laughs> I didn't say that to her, but I thought it. And she said, I think that really, if you could just recognize that you can't do this by yourself, and it might be something to do with your pride, and just humble yourself and ask God to help you. Just ask him to show you your heart and see if this is something that, you know, if you ask him to help you and you realize and admit that you cannot do this on your own. Now, I recognize this as one of the 12 steps. I started thinking, hey, you think I have a problem. Anyways, well, I did. And so I was like, I really, I kind of felt like I don't really need to bring God into this. Like, this is just me needing to work out 
sedentary issues and discipline issues in reality, she was right. So I said, okay, well, I will try it and I will pray about it and I'll ask the Lord to show me. And so it was kind of funny because I realized I was having a conversation with my daughter and I was thinking, you know, I, I feel like my weight issues really did begin with a time in my life that I went through um, in 2013, 2015 that really impacted me. Like they really affected me. And that was that I had two miscarriages, one in 2013 and one in 2015. And ever since then, my health declined and I struggled with pain and all kinds of weaknesses and things like that. And, and so not to get into too many details, but I realized that there was a heart issue there and it really affected my trust factor with God, even though I know that he's trustworthy and I know that he is good, but it really hurt me. And so I questioned that and I really struggled. And so then I took what she said and took it to heart. And so I prayed about it. And now we get to the part where I get to share some of my favorite scriptures with you and why they're my favorite and also how the Lord has used them in my life. You know, we all have our one thing. Maybe it's more than one thing for you, but it's like Paul had the thorn in his flesh with, and possibly could have been his eyes. We don't know for sure because he never really said. But with that um, challenge in his life and his body or whatever it was God, that, that he had struggled with, you know, he let us sort of see into that part of his life. And so I can identify with that. Definitely have journaled a couple of the same things for many years and really like ask God to fix it for me. Like God heal me rather than God show me how to get better and show me what is in my heart or what is in my um, diet that can change these things. And so it's so interesting how we all have these things. So when we have a weakness, we tend to mask it or pose beyond it. So it looks like it's not there or we become very, um, what's the word, great performers. We can mask all kinds of things. And so I don't believe that that's God's intention for us. I don't believe that that's God's best design for us to try to mask our weaknesses or like me, try to discipline them away. Now discipline is definitely a good and godly thing. We need to be disciplined. But if we are being disciplined and striving, but not inviting God into those places of weakness in our own personal life. Now I'm talking to you about my, my physical and emotional and heart issues that I feel like has been something that the Lord, and it's embarrassing for me to say it because I feel like I've dealt with it for so many years. And also it's like, uh, that's too much information. But the truth is, is that we all have something, right? And so I want you to know that you're not alone. Paul had these issues too, and we all have them. So what are we going to do with them? So for, for me, for years, I thought it was an issue of trying to work it out. Just got to do it. And it's like, no matter what I tried, it would not work. And I've had people give me all these advice and sell me shakes and all these things, which work for some people and most people, but would not work for me. So I decided to clear the mechanisms, like just stop all of this taking advice from everyone and ask the Lord. So I stopped and I read Psalm 139. It's one of my favorite verses. It's always where I start when I am beginning, you know, one of those big conversations with God. And it is Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. And it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I learned that as a song, so it's easier to remember. I won't sing it for you today. I'm sorry, maybe another time. But, um, but I always remember that where the Lord will show me my thoughts, like he's searching my heart to see if there's anything in me that would, would keep me from following in his ways, from being walking in wholeness. And so starting there, and then 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 through 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 
Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is not one of my favorite verses, to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel like, you know, with those job interviews, you're, you're trained in college, you know, for when you're going to have your job interviews, just be ready. They're going to ask you, what is your greatest strength and what is your greatest weakness? Well, I ask those questions too when I'm interviewing. <laughs> it's funny because I don't even know why we ask it anymore because the truth is, it's like you need to ask their their references, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Because if you ask me, I'm going to say, oh, I tend to work too hard and I tend to take on other people's responsibilities when, you know, maybe they're lagging. And so it just makes me look like a hero to an employee or a future employee. And so we all sort of dread the weakness question. What's your greatest weakness? Because we make it into our greatest strength. Like what you think as a weakness is really just me being amazing. So I realized that I was doing this in real life. You know, my weakness is this, but really it's just so good actually. But in reality, it really is a weakness. So now back to me saying to the Lord, okay, God, I see this area in my heart that was really hurt. And if this has anything to do with me not being able to get to a point of making the right choices to be healthy, then show me that. And I was texting my sister and I said, I prayed the prayer and I've asked the Lord, but I'm not feeling anything. It's not like the Lord was like, yes. And then he just poured down this amazing anointing and discipline and strength. And all of these things went away that were, you know, physical problems and issues. But it was more like nothing. I felt nothing until I realized, wait a minute, I'm actually doing things that I have committed to doing. And it's not hard for me. And I actually look forward to it. While I'm still dealing with issues health-wise that I am working on, but I feel like the Lord is giving me wisdom. And so it's like one step at a time. And so I really genuinely had to say, God, I realize, sorry, I just totally mauled the microphone, which isn't good for sound. Jeff, you can edit that out if you want. But anyway, um, it's like I, I feel like God has given me wisdom. And not only that, but things something has clicked and changed. And it's not hard anymore. And so is that miraculous? I mean, I think that God is doing what he promised in that he is giving me strength in my weakness. And I believe that God wants to do that. And so I had to come to a point where I said, God, I cannot do this by myself. And I felt very embarrassed to say that to God. Isn't that funny that we think that God doesn't already know all of that? And so I humbled myself before the Lord, which is coming down to earth and being who you really are because God knows who you are anyways. And then secondly, asking God for help. James 1, 2 through 5 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It's kind of funny because it seems like such a non-issue what I'm talking about, but it was kind of a test of my faith. Like, okay, I'm going to say that I cannot do this by myself, which I almost didn't believe, but I was also saying that, God, I need your help. So if you can give me the strength, give me the wisdom, then show me how to do this. And I know that there are those of you who have such, like when you talk about trials and, you know, struggles and suffering and things like that, what I'm talking about sounds stupid, <laughs> but I want you to know that we all have our things. So I'm just being honest about what it is that the Lord showed me this. And I think that it goes for all things, it goes for the very big things and the very, very big struggles in our lives too. But so we consider it pure joy when, whenever we go through um, different trials and many, many different kinds of trials, but because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may mat be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And so I just encourage you today, if you're going through something, and this has been something that you have dealt with maybe your whole life, or maybe it's been for five years, but it's a struggle, maybe it's an addiction, maybe it is... Uh, an unforgiveness issue and it's showing up in your physical body or just hurt and a lack of trust, something that I dealt with. Maybe that's something like for, you, you know, I've told you that I've started feeling different things in my physical body. Well, our bodies and our minds and our spirits are all connected, right? And so this is such an encouragement to know that Doing the work of perseverance, perseverance is easy when you're successful. It's easy when you are seeing results. When perseverance really counts is when it's hard, when you're tired, when you feel like giving up. That's when perseverance kicks in and you press through it. So this word is for someone listening today. Don't give up persevere, press through it, recognize that this is when Jesus kicks in. This is when the strength of God comes into your weakness. And it says that it's made perfect in our weakness. His strength is where our weakness is his place of joy, where he wants to come in and heal and bring deliverance to us. And then it says that we should ask generously without um you know, without fear and recognize that God has all wisdom for you. And here's another scripture that is so good. It goes along with the perseverance theme and it's Romans 5, 1 through 4. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope. Have you gone through something in your life that has been so difficult and you felt like giving up or maybe you just stepped back, you stopped trusting God, you stopped going to God for those things that matter to you because you're not sure that it's really where God needs to be brought in. Maybe you don't want to bother him with it. And yet God is calling you to press through that. Persevere. Do not give up on your faith. Do not give up on trusting God. Do not land there in that place of hurt. Because when you press through and you say, God, help me, give me your wisdom. He comes into that place and he's strong for you. Then your character is built. Something inside you is a little bit stronger. Something inside of you can handle a little bit more and has an anointing to bless and also touch those around you because you've been through it and you understand. And so then it produces hope. And hope is looking for what is not seen and believing that it will come to pass. And so... The third thing that I want to talk about today is that just what we've been talking about there, and that is persevere. Do not give up. Press through the give up moments. Press through the I am tired moments and ask the Lord to show you a new direction. Maybe you've been going and going and going and you feel like, you know what? Day one and day 100 look the same. I don't even get the point. Why would I even bother? And the Lord is there to show you, you know what? Day one through 100 was great for this, but day 101 and all the way to 200 should look like this because this is what's going to get you to where you want to be. And so asking the Lord to redirect you, maybe you don't have all the wisdom that you need and God wants to give that to you. So ask him for new direction. Ask him for his wisdom, not just your understanding but the Lord's wisdom. You know the saying, we've all heard it, if at first you don't succeed, what? Try, try again. And we've all been there, and that is a very, very good, um, it's a good saying, and it's something that we should practice and exercise, because it's definitely an exercise. But if you're not careful, that can become striving. If I don't succeed, I will try, try again. And we just try, try our whole lives. And still, we are still looking the same as day one. 
And so without the Holy Spirit in our lives, along with perseverance, like we do everything we know to do, but what we cannot do, what does not happen through our own strength and discipline, then we ask the Lord, come into this place of weakness. I can't do it without you. So please help me. Please give me your wisdom. Please give me direction and clarity as to what I can do to make this get to the place of the goal of, of where of wholeness of maturity, like it said in the verse in the um, in the scripture verse earlier. And uh, you know Walt Disney. We all know and love Walt Disney. I'm going to read his story and talk about perseverance. Remember when I said that um, it's easy to persevere when we're successful. And it is not easy to persevere, but when perseverance actually kicks in is when we failed and failed and failed again. So listen to this story. Bear with me because it's a little bit long for listening. I'm not very good at listening to, to people read to me, but bear with me. I think you'll enjoy it. So as a young man, Walt Disney was fired from the Kansas City Star newspaper because his boss thought he lacked creativity. What? That's so crazy. Disney, Walt Disney lacked creativity. Fire him. So remember that, Kansas City Star newspaper. You're going to remember that name because it's going to come up again later. He went on to form an animation company called Laughagram Films in 1921. Bill, if you want to go get me your Walt Disney picture signed, I'll show that as an illustrated sermon. Um, so he went on to form the animation company called Laughagram Films in 1921. Using his natural salesmanship abilities, Disney was able to raise $15,000 for the company. That's about $216,000 in today's money. However, he made a deal with a New York distributor, and when the distributor went out of business, Disney was forced to shut Laughagram down. He could barely pay his rent and even res resorted to eating dog food. Broke but not defeated, Disney went his last few dollars on a train ticket to Hollywood. Unfortunately, his troubles were not over. In 1926, Disney created a cartoon character named Oswald the Rabbit. When he attempted to negotiate a better deal with Universal Studios, the cartoons distributor Disney discovered that Universal had secretly patented the Oswald character. Okay, so this is his character, Oswald the Rabbit, and he goes to work with Universal Studios. They secretly patented his animation drawing, and then they hired Disney artists away from Walt Disney and continued the cartoon without Disney's input and without paying him. How wrong is that? If that happened to you, which things like that have probably happened to some of you, but in a different, you know, with a different scenario, it's so frustrating and so maddening. And you just think, how can this world let people get away with stuff like that? That's just wrong. Wait for it. So as if that wasn't enough, Disney also struggled to release some of his now classic films. He was told Mickey Mouse would fail because the mouse would terrify women. Mickey Mouse is terrifying, I know. Distributors rejected the Three Little Pigs, saying it needed more characters. Pinocchio was shut down during production, and Disney had to rewrite the entire storyline. That's during production. Other films like Bambi, Pollyanna, and Fantasia were misunderstood by audiences at the time of their release, only to become favorites later on. Disney's greatest example of perseverance occurred when he tried to make the book Mary Poppins into a film. In 1944, at the suggestion of his daughter, Disney decided to adopt the Pamela Travers novel into adapt the Pamela Travers novel into a screenplay. However, Travers had absolutely no interest in selling Mary Poppins to Hollywood. To win her over, Disney visited Travers at her England home um, repeatedly for the next 16 years. He tried to get her to sell or allow him to make Mary Poppins into a movie. 16 years! Would you wait for 16 years? I would take no for an answer. And then, after more than a decade and a half of persuasion, Travers was overcome by Disney's charm and vision for the film and finally gave him permission to bring Mary Poppins to the big screen. The result is a timeless classic. 
In a fitting twist of fate, the Disney company went on to purchase ABC in 1996. At the time, ABC was owner of the Kansas City Star, meaning the newspaper that once fired Disney had become part of the empire he had created. And all thanks to his what? Creativity and perseverance. Pastor Bill, will you please bring out the Walt Disney? Show them and tell them what it is. You have to use my microphone. Well, you can let them know. Okay, this is Walt Disney, and he signed it, Walt Disney. Isn't that cool? Thank you. Yeah, he, in order to do his signature the way that he does it, and this is a fountain pen signature, you have to be going in circles before you even hit the page. Otherwise, it won't look like that. So people said it was very interesting to see him draw his signature, which looked very artistic because he was an artist. Which you can actually replicate yourself. But it's not worth as much when Bill does it because it's not real. Anyway, so isn't that amazing? So you might think, you know what? I have been waiting for a year or I have been waiting for 10 years and this thing has not happened. And I have asked God, I've prayed, I've persevered. persevered. Well, Disney, he got fired from that job in like the 1920s. And it wasn't until 1996 that he bought out that same newspaper that said he wasn't creative. So here comes my two most favorite scriptures that I have never forgotten. One, again, because it's a song. And I don't know if you all know um, Andre Crouch. He was a gospel singer in the 1970s. And my family grew up. They, he actually stayed in our home. They were touring through California and needed a place to stay because their booking had uh, failed or come out so they were looking for a place where they could fit all of Andre Crouch's band and the disciples and we happened to have like this big dorm facility because we had um, Teen Challenge Girls that would stay in our home. Well, we didn't have Teen Challenge Girls with us at that time and so my parents offered our home and Andre Crouch and the disciples came and stayed and I will never forget their big bus and all of them coming and they sang and my mom and dad were so, we were just in heaven. It was so much fun. But a song that they used to sing is, um, let us not get tired of doing what is right for after a while we shall reap a harvest of blessing. So tempted to sing it, but I know it would come out so weird. <laughs> but it was something that I just, every once in a while, it will just come into my head. And I had to be maybe seven when that happened. And I have never forgotten that song the meaning of it, or them, the uh, Andre Crouch and, and the band there. But that is found in Galatians 6, 9, and it's so true. Don't get tired of doing what is right. After a while, you will reap a harvest of blessing. But don't give up. And the other one is Hebrews 10, 34 through 35. And this is, of course, coming to the church that when Paul is speaking to the churches and he's traveling throughout um, the land and he's telling them don't give up you know they've been so persecuted they were definitely persecuted for their faith and so um, you know this scripture to me applies to so many different places in my life um, but it says do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward and after you have done the will of God you will receive what was promised so don't give up recognize that we all need God's help. So what is that area in your life that you think, no, it's really on me. I've got to do this, even though I've never been able to get over this. And maybe it's, you know, something like we talked about earlier. It's just one of those things and it is what it is. If you've adopted that saying, our family's not allowed to say it is what it is. <laughs> we started that years ago and Bill's like, no, we don't say it is what it is. Nothing is what it is, not with Jesus, because all things are possible with him. He didn't say it so spiritual like that, but that's the truth. And so do not give up. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw away what you know to be true in the word of God for you. Like we can, I can pray for other people to have confidence. I can pray for other people's weaknesses and tell them Jesus wants to come into that place of weakness. But when it comes to me, I'm like, I just need to work this out. No. Yes, we need to be disciplined. And yes, we need to do what we know to do. But those things that you cannot do by yourself, just admit it. 
give up, surrender that to God and say, I cannot do this by myself. Will you please help me? Will you show me your ways? And you might not, like there may not be thunder and lightning. There may not be some writing on the wall for you, but I guarantee you that when you invite God into that place, you will begin to see and feel a difference. And it may not be a moment, you know, for me, it wasn't like a moment and I was like, and all the angels sing and everything just changes. It's not like that. I didn't feel heat go through my body. I didn't have any miraculous sign and wonder. It was just, he helped me and he's continuing to help me every day. And he can do that for you too, no matter how big the suffering or struggle you might be carrying because you might have a major life-threatening struggle that you've been walking through or relationship could be like catastrophic level of pain for you, that's not too big for God. Whatever we cannot do by ourselves, we can ask God for help and recognize, just humble yourself and say, God, I'm weak in this. I cannot do this by myself and help me. So bow your heads with me. I want to pray for you and pray that God will give you that confidence, that humbling moment to recognize that you cannot do it by yourself. And let's ask Jesus to come into our places of weakness and admit that we have them. We all do. If we didn't, we'd be Jesus. So we know we're not that, right? So let's pray. First of all, God, we thank you that you are a loving father and that you see us as your children and that you want to help us. And so we start just like the scripture says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and um, know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in your way everlasting, God. So we just ask that you'll show us those things in our hearts, Lord, and whatever that might be that attaches to our weakness or our inabilities, if there's something that, that you could show us that we could lay down at your feet, Lord, we ask that you would do that. And secondly, we humble ourselves to say, I am weak. I cannot do this by myself. And I don't want to admit that I'm weak. I don't like the word weakness, but I also know that that allows for you to come into that place and be made perfect in your strength, God, that your strength will become my strength. And so we ask God that you would give us wisdom and give us your understanding and redirect our plans. If our plans are not going to lead us into your way that is everlasting, that is eternal, then change our plans. Show us your way, God, that we might follow it. Give us perseverance to press through those quitting points so that we will know that you are the reason that we can press on, God, and that we would be through that growing character, that our character would be shaped and formed through adversity, but mostly through how you take us through that adversity and make us strong so that we will have hope in our eternal health and healing and joy and wholeness in Christ. So we will not get tired of doing what's right and we will not give up. And we thank you that we will receive the promise that you've given after we've done your will. So show us your will that we might walk in it, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.